I've got some plywood here, which I want to cut into a circle. I could, from my center point, mark with a compass and freehand cut it, and I'd probably be, be okay. But if I want to get really accurate circles, or a whole bunch of them exactly the same size, it's going to be worth making up a jig. What I've got here is a jig that basically has a sliding center. This screw is going to pop into the center of my plywood later on to be the center of my circle. And I've got this so it's really quite adjustable. So our bandsaw blade is going to be sitting through here later on. I could cut maybe just a two inch radius. Or if I turn this piece of plywood around and push it out, I could be cutting up to a four or five foot radius. So I've got all the sizes in between within this one jig. There's some washers set in here. Underneath there is a screw that I'm gonna screw up when I've got this into position, and that's gonna lock this off. If I just put the screw or the bolt up without a washer on it, I would damage the bottom of my slider, and possibly it wouldn't slide so well, or next time I came to use it, it would pop back into the hole I produced before. So that wouldn't be ideal. What we're also going to have to do, because it's the first time this jig has been used, is put this on the bandsaw to cut a curve and a slot into my plywood. I want to try and get it set up that the front edge of the blade, or within the gullet, is in the centre of my circle. If you don't get this center line lined up, you won't get a circle, it'll cut a spiral, which is no good for us. Also, the bandsaw blade I put in will vary depending whether I'm doing a small radius or a very large one. For a small two inch radius, I want a narrow blade. For a five foot radius, I will have a wide blade. So the width of this blade will also alter the position of our jig. What we're going to be cutting here is plywood and plywood on my disc that I'm making. So I've got an M42 steel blade in the bandsaw. If I had a standard carbon, it would cut the plywood, but it wouldn't last very long. So the right blade for the material that's being cut. These are my screws that I'm going to tighten down to hold my dovetail batten in the right position. I've got two extra screw holes in here because this jig could also be used on other machines in the workshop that we will look at at another point. I have a slider bar that's been routed or dadoed into my plywood for the right position. And on the front here I have a piece of timber fixed which acts as a reference against the front edge of my table. With an adjustable screw, and this is going to be my fine adjuster so I can get my bandsaw to the right position, depending on whether I have a narrow blade or a wide blade in there. This jig is quite heavy, so I've got two things set up to help me. I've got a roller over here. This roller is very good because it's bearing, so you can use it in any direction. So that's going to help carry some of my weight. If you don't have this kind of setup, then on the other side, I've got a piece of solid timber which has been machined fractionally thicker than my plywood. So my plywood's gonna tuck underneath here. There's a piece which is lapping over and that's gonna stop my plywood from kicking up. I haven't got it so it's the same thickness. I don't want it to jam in there. That's to assist me, not to get me snatching up. This is the piece of plywood I'm going to cut. I marked a center. I've drilled it nice and square with a hole that's just snug onto my bolt. So it's going to be nice and strong. If I wanted a much more discreet hole, I could just do it almost on a pinhead. So it would just about disappear later on. So I'm going to place it onto my center point. I'm going to push it onto the bandsaw. Up against my stop that I've preset. And then I can start spinning it and get a nice perfect circle.
that looks really clean. I can withdraw my jig back, take my disc off, and it really is a perfect circle. If you don't get that center spot, just where the front of the teeth are, you'll get a spiral and a lump, and it will either cut smaller into the lump or out into a spiral. But that's really good. That's a really nice finish. So I could use this same jig to improve this on the disc sander. I could route it on the router or possibly on the spindle molder using this same jig, just having really the slider bar in a different position. We know that cutting a circle is fairly straightforward, but what we have here is a mallet that my students make as one of their test projects. We have a curve on here, which we could cut as a freehand curve, but actually we've got a jig we've made up where the pivot point is back over here. We've got a baseboard of plywood. This is a screw going through that creates our pivot point. Got some HDPE, which fits into our mitre slot. And the whole of this top section rotates on that center point. I've got a batten we've made up, which is connected with wing nuts, pre-mortised. This sits onto the jig. We need to get it lined up so it's on the right position of the jig and then get these ones just tightened down. Just pivot this back out of the way for the moment. I've got it set up. So again, the front of the teeth are on the center of our circle. And I've got a stop block on the back, just G cramped on. This bit of plywood, I've made it slightly thinner than our jig. So we don't come around and hit it. We want to swing happily over the top of there. Push them up to the stop block and then just rotate it around to make the cut. And the idea is we could make a hundred of these and they'd all be exactly the same. Jig making takes some time, so it's only worth doing if you've got 10, 20, 100 and a repeating uh, amount that you're going to be making of a particular piece. But also we will use this same jig with a slightly different positioned mitre slot on our disc sander. And again, we will just swing this across the disc sander. And then it just requires very little hand finishing to make these a complete head for the mallets.